I wanted to welcome everybody. I'm Tim McCluskey. I'm the uh, president of the town council here in Centerville. Wanted to thank everybody for coming tonight. I do want to introduce uh, Allison Moppet from the Queen Anne's County Center for the Arts. She's going to say a couple of words. This is their facility, and she wanted to talk a little bit about the exhibit that they have uh, going on right now. So, Allison. Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the Queen Anne's County Center for the Arts. Uh, we've currently got one of my favorite shows that we have all year up, it's called Small Works. Um, we take donations of pieces from, we've got around 50 artists this year in all kinds of disciplines and every one of these pieces is going to be won by someone. Um, we sell raffle tickets for them for five dollars or three for ten um, and if you would like to spend some more time with these small works there's today and we also have a cocktail hour and um, concert coming up on Saturday night that covers ten dollars which covers all of your food and drink it's going to be super fun it's going to feature Carrie Anthony who is a singer and guitarist of note uh, in the area um, so feel free to really look at these pieces if you get a chance we've got um, people that are, we've got some artists like Jack O'Brien who has, is in his 80s and has been doing this show since it started and we have very near him some pieces from uh, a college student who is currently studying illustration and everything in between. So um, it's a fun show, enjoy it if you get a chance, maybe come see us Saturday night. So I wanted to introduce my fellow council members. Uh, Jeff Morgan is back here. Jim Beecham is back here as well. So thank you guys for coming uh, and supporting uh, our business event. Uh, in addition, we have uh, Bunky Luffman, who's here from the governor's office. He's the Eastern Shore representative uh, from the governor's office, former uh, council member as well. So you know all about municipal government as well. Uh, also, Mike Whitehill is, is a former town council member. Uh, he's the chairman of our, our parks board as well, so I wanted to uh, welcome you as well, Mike. A uh, couple of things I just wanted to go over. You know, economic development uh, is really a, a big priority for the town council. We've spent a lot of time, effort, money uh, over the past several years on economic development. Um, every year we have a budget that comes up, and, and it's tough, you know, being able to fund economic development. So we really want to hear from you about what, what's important. Important, right? We've got uh, several new things that have been happening. Some of you may or may not know about them. We've got uh, Centerville Economic Development Authority, which is a, a, an appointed board uh, that is responsible for helping us to set economic development policy, uh, as well as make recommendations in terms of funding. So if there are things that you guys feel as business owners uh, that's important, let us know. Um, We've got a lot of new businesses that are coming into town, so I think that's a fantastic thing. We're also spending a lot of time and effort and money on infrastructure. Some of you probably have heard we've got a little construction project that's coming up. Uh, it's been slightly postponed due to the weather, um, but infrastructure is, is really a priority for this council. Uh, I think that when we're trying to encourage new businesses and, and new people to move into town, having good roads is really important uh, and, and the underlying infrastructure underneath them. When we do get done with Liberty and Commerce, We'll have redone just about every major road that we have uh, here in town. Um, finally, I have a, an updated sign ordinance that the Planning Commission has been spending a, for the better part of a year on. Uh, about a year or so ago, we've been talking about, the Planning Commission has been talking about uh, the sign ordinance. It's been, it was in several different forms. There's this actual sign ordinance in our zoning code. We have a design standards that is sometimes is conflicting. And if you were a business looking to add a sign or modify a sign, you had to go to several different places. So they have spent a good part of the past year on work, uh, work sessions coming up with a sign ordinance that mostly kind of brings them all together, uh, but also does make some modifications. Um, I do want to let you know as well that, that this sign ordinance was kind of done with a bunch of planning commissioners sitting in a room coming up with what they think uh, are, are the best ideas. And while I think that's a good way to do it, I think it's really important as business owners for, imp or for, for uh, the input that you have on how this would affect your business, right? So, you know, this is by no means a final ordinance. It's not ready to be presented to the town council for consideration. Uh, we really would like to have impact, uh, you know, have your ideas on how it might impact you. If there's questions that you have about how does this thing work or what would this thing be, 
feel free to call me. I've got all my business cards are out in the back. My phone number, my mobile number is on it. And I would really encourage you to, you know, if you want, pull the ordinance out, go in front of your business, call me up, and we can go through how that would affect you, right? If um, I'm mostly concerned with if you have a sign now, obviously you'd be grandfathered in, but if that sign is acceptable now, it should be acceptable, in my opinion, uh, in the future as well. So signs is, uh, a sign ordinance is one of the most complicated things, and we really want to make sure that we get it right. Um, so that's everything that I have to say. You know, we've got, uh, I, I did talk a little bit about the, the Centerville Economic Development Authority. We've got a Main Street program that has been in, uh, going on for several years now. We've got a lot of events that are happening here throughout town. So we want to do everything we can to continue to make economic development a priority, continue to support our businesses as well. Um, and I wanted to introduce now uh, Carol D'Agostino, who's the director of our uh, Main Street program. She's going to talk a little bit about some of the things she's done, uh, and we'll move on from there. So feel free to continue getting some food. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, this is just like a church. It's a little... Okay, but at least you can see me here at church. They can't see me. I, I tell them that that's good because it's much more spiritual that way, but they don't buy into that. But who can? Anyway, so um, just wanted to be brief in some of my comments. Um, some dates. So we, uh, Tim referred to some events. Back on the schedule for our signature event, June 16th, uh, Drink Maryland, uh, the Maryland Makers Festival will happen again. So that is. Uh, Good news, it brought in 2,000 people last year um, from seven different states, in addition to Maryland and also Washington, D.C. So it was definitely a draw for our visitors. And we had quite a few people from Centerville who showed up as well. So that's awesome. Our 4th of July, which is very rarely on the 4th of July, but um, our festivities will be Sunday, July 1st this year. And uh, Centerville Day will be October 27th. So. I really don't want to go backwards. I want to go into the fall right now. Oh. Anyway, so here's a couple things. Uh, right now, I'm working on the Spring Centerville Circular. So if you are interested in advertising, um, and right after that will be the our seasonal rack cards. So we've been able to put out some um, the spring, summer, and then the fall, winter rack cards. They get distributed to all the hotels on Kent Island as well as the visitor centers. And also they're shared through our own tourism office to uh, the other county uh, tourism offices. So we try to get that out. So we are looking for dates for any events that businesses either are hosting or our organizations in town. So if you have something coming up from the end of March through the end of August, um, get those dates to me. So we just need some basic information what the event is, where it's taking place and what time and who takes the information. And regarding the road construction, we're also working on ways to continue to su support our businesses during the construction. Um, in On the side, we have some mock-ups of an ad. Uh, what I would like to do is reserve a space in every issue of the Centerville Circular, which is quarterly, for our businesses. Um, I would subsidize the page and sell off listings. That way, uh, it would be like a customer appreciation page. Uh, many towns that have undergone uh, major road constructions have really couched it in, we appreciate people supporting our businesses. And we would like to encourage that as well. So um, I'm going to be reaching out to uh, our businesses. And uh, it, it will be as minimal as $35. And uh, as you know, the Centerville Circular reaches every home in Centerville. So that's about um, the last issue went to 4,169 homes. So it's pretty good for $35. Um, so this is just one tactic that we're using. We'll also share that online. Uh, we have a group coming together. Um, I think Peggy's here. Uh, from Dr. Gell's office, and she has volunteered to be on that committee to help us conjure up some, some uh, really solid marketing ideas, and uh, that group is going to start 
meeting on uh, the 15th. So if you want to take a look at this, they're in the back, uh, and give some feedback. This is just a mock-up to give you an idea of the approach. So um, as always, I am available to address any concern that you may have or an idea. I love ideas, um, and we get a lot of volunteer support to execute them. So um, my door is always open. If I'm not in the office, everyone knows my home number. So don't be shy. <laughs> um, if there aren't any questions, then I will turn it over to my colleague, Bill Batcher. Thanks, Carol. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. And I've, I know a lot of you uh, in my role as economic development manager. Some of you I don't. And for those of you that I haven't talked to, a uh, one or one I would like to do that. And um, if not, my cards are in the back and I could follow up with you. Um, Tim talked about the, the town's commitment to, dec to economic development. And uh, I'm a product of that commitment. Uh, I've spent 30 years in the economic development profession. Uh, a lot of years with the state of Maryland economic development. I uh, ran the Anne Arundel County Economic Development Corporation for a while. I worked in Worcester County. Uh, so I've done state, uh, big county, small county, and now uh, the hole in my resume was, was a small town. So, so here I am. Um, I have a little family background uh, here in town. Um, my father uh, bought a piece of property back in the mid-70s on Grove Creek outside of town. So my family's had a, uh, a home here right outside of town since, since the mid-70s. So this place feels very comfortable to me. Um, I think we all see uh, the, the, the development and activity here in town. Uh, there's a lot of excitement going on. Uh, as I told uh, our seat of board and Kathy McGruder's here, who's our chairman of our board, and Joe Brown is here. Uh, for a small town, uh, you know, the dream of an economic, well, for the, the basic function of economic development is jobs and investment that creates revenue to provide government services. That's the economic development 101. And, uh, you know, I worked in places that, that, that wish they had the kind of inventory that we have here in town one of the diversity of the economy here and then two the the inventory to um, to locate companies to grow companies um, so we have a tremendous diversity of opportunity to attract new business here and and more importantly our existing companies like dale's company to grow and prosper here so it's an exciting time um, we have a really good plan uh, our, our board is very active, um, which is made up of community leaders. We meet every, every other month, and uh, uh, we're, we're performance-driven. We, uh, we have a matrix that we go over every meeting. We talk about uh, what the goals are that we want to achieve and what's the progress report on those goals. So uh, we're, we're engaged, we're active, and, and we're excited about the future of, of Centerville. Um, one of the attractions of this job was, uh, was the uh, Queen Anne's County Economic Development Director, which is Paige Tillman. She's with us here today. Uh, Paige and I have, have ran into each other, worked with each other for over 25 years. So when I, when I accepted the part-time economic development job, uh, Paige, I think, accepted her job a week or two before. And so I was really excited for the opportunity to work with her again. So. Uh, it doesn't, you, you don't have to go too far to see the excitement and activity in Queen Anne's County. And, you know, our challenge for the town is how do we attract and, and amplify what's happening there that's appropriate for the town of Centerville. So we, Paige and I talk very frequently and we, we work on a lot of projects together. So uh, with that, I will turn it back. And I think Paige wanted to, Tim, is it all right if I, uh, Paige Tillman uh, with the Queen Anne's County uh, Economic Development Director would like to say a few things. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for having me here this evening. It's lovely to be in front of all of you. Um, as Bill mentioned, I am um, about seven, six months into the job. I took the job in May, and in June they told me I could also work with tourism. So <laughs> it's been a lot to, uh, to put together, but I feel like we really do have good momentum. And Centerville is our, is our place to sell. Um, we have an, a really nice diverse manufacturing base as you come over the bridge with the Chesapeake Bay Business Park and things going on there at Thompson Park. But the next big place where we have 
industrial commercial land is here in Centerville. So we're very excited to be working with you. We haven't really rolled out a big marketing program yet, but we've made little steps and we feel as though those incremental steps will help us to gain momentum. We do have a brochure, it's on our website, qac.org, and we have our new brief economic facts, and I have a copy of them on the table here, a couple of copies, and really that's how we measure our economic development is by employment, by investment, by the number of businesses we have in the county. So uh, I'm gonna look forward to uh, continuing to work with Bill, and I hope we can bring you some good results. Thank you. I mentioned uh, Kathy Magruder, the chairman of our CETA board, and uh, invite her up to uh, say a few brief remarks since she's here with us today. I want to hear from you all. We want to hear what you need to keep your business successful here in Centerville, how we can grow businesses in Centerville, how we can add to the business inventory in Centerville, how we can grow the commercial tax base so we can keep our residential tax rates down in Centerville. And that's why we assembled this tonight. We want to do these business networking events quarterly if we can. We'd like to bring more representatives from the business community out so that we're talking with each other and to each other, that we're patronizing each other's businesses in town that we're driving business to each other's businesses in town. That's really all I wanted to say tonight, but I'm really anxious to hear from you all, and I think, I, I hope the plan is to open up the floor to the audience, and we'd be happy to uh, get your feedback either uh, formally or informally. I know there's some concerns about the road construction. We hope we're taking proactive steps to address that on your behalf. Um, but this is a big picture plan for us, we laid out a strategic plan several years ago. Uh, we, we completed that and we started looking at how we can implement that. Where are our best opportunities? We looked at the character of the community. We looked at the history of the community. We looked at what our best opportunities are with the composition of our demographics in Centerville. And we targeted some very specific industries, age and place services. How can we make sure that we're leveraging off that uh, customer base that's out there at Symphony Village and provide services to support them as they grow and age in Centerville. How can we grow small businesses and tech businesses that can work anywhere but the quality of life here is really what they're after. So it's not as easy to deliver as it is to envision and it really does take a lot more partnership to get it done and the commitment of funds that the council's made to fund Bill's position I think is a step in the right direction so I applaud all of them. Some of them get a little more pressure than others about that. But um, that continued investment is gonna be important for the business community to support. If you're not seeing some results or you're not seeing outcomes that you think you need to see, um, we need to hear that and we need to continue to tell the council that uh, keeping uh, focused effort in economic development is an important priority to grow Centerville uh, and in a growth by choice, not by chance way. That's all I have. Um, do you want to do, Tim? A yeah, so I just have a couple of great things if you want. Okay, I don't know if we have anything else on the, on the list there. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of other things. You know, on Centerville Day, it's October 27th this year. It's also going to be the uh, the dedication for the county courthouse. So it's actually going to happen the same day. So uh, I think that's a pretty big deal. Um, 2019, which is not that far away, is the 10-year, uh, I guess, anniversary of the comp plan. So Maryland state law calls for comp plans to be updated, I believe it's every 10 years. So it's not going to be too long from now that we're going to start talking about the comp plan and what's changed over the past 10 years and, and how do we want uh, the, the future of Centerville's growth to go, both from a residential or you know housing standpoint, but also from a business standpoint. So um, I believe that at the last time that we did the comp plan, it actually started in I think 2006 so it took about three years to actually get it done and there's a lot of individuals who were on that committee who weren't necessarily residents of the town so we may be looking out to many of you to uh, ask 
your input as well. Uh, you know, we've got the 301 corridor that's going to be opening up. If you've been up in Delaware, I mean, there's going to be a lot more traffic that's going to be coming down there. We want to try to figure out how we might be able to capitalize on some of that. And then I agree totally with what Kathy had said. I mean, we want to hear from you. So, you know, you've got a good uh, concentration of, of town officials and, and uh, um, individuals representing the town. So if you have questions, please, I'm happy to answer them. Any of my colleagues, I'm sure, are happy to answer them. Uh, and otherwise, just, you know, enjoy some more food and, and some networking. So I'll open it up to questions if anybody has any. All right, now we're closed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs>